Hi, I'm the Space Quest historian, and welcome to the last episode of the Space Quest Primers. The Space Quest series came to a screeching halt in 1995 with this game, Space Quest VI, The Spinal Frontier. And I say screeching because it does end on a bit of a cliffhanger, and plans for Space Quest VII were in fact underway after this game. But then Sierra, the company that made these games, went to shit, and eventually got sold off in one of the biggest financial scandals of the modern day. So if you want to know more about that side of things, my advice is to read this book, The Sierra Adventure, by my friend Sean Mills, where he's interviewed a bunch of former Sierra employees. Or if you want the scoop from the executive office point of view, there's this book, Not All Fairy Tales Have Happy Endings, written by the founder of the company, Ken Williams. Both books are excellent, and I highly recommend them. So, okay, Space Quest VI. <laughs> Where to begin? It was primarily written and designed by Josh Mandel, the sort of unofficial third guy from Andromeda. For many years, Josh had been contributing writing to a bunch of Sierra games, not least of which, Space Quest IV, where he, among other things, wrote these fantastic parodies of contemporary games in the bargain bin and the somewhat ill-advised remake of Space Quest 1, where he practically wrote all the stuff that wasn't in the original game. So Josh had been pitching ideas for a new Space Quest game since Space Quest 4 ended, and was told that he could do Space Quest 5, but then Sierra turned around and gave that project to Dynamics instead. When that game was done, he was then told he could do Space Quest 6 instead. His plan was to bring the series back to its roots of Roger bopping around planets and having a good time, but he thought, instead of planets, how about we shrink him down to miniature size and have him bop around human organs like they were different tiny planets? Okay, I am getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but not more so than the box cover of the game, which we'll get back to. As the game opens, Roger is put on trial for his heroic deeds in the last game. Already here, there's some confusion as to what actually happened, since the Admiral here says, Due to your successful return of the SCS Eureka, yeah, anyway, this is all just to bust him back down to Janitor so we can send him off and have fun on other planets. The crew he had in Space Quest V, not even mentioned once in this game. Beatrice, his girlfriend, destined to become his future wife, mother of his son that saves him at the start of Space Quest IV, only mentioned in passing, and never actually appears in the game. So, Roger is assigned to a ship called the Deep Ship 86. Yes, it is shaped like a jockstrap. That's a callback to the jockstrap we used in Space Quest 2 because Sierra actually got an angry letter from a mom about that. So they thought, fuck it, we'll make the ship look like a jockstrap. Eat shit, concerned moms. And is on shore leave on this shithole of a planet called Polysorbate 860 when he's captured and kidnapped by two burly goons. He escapes their apartment by electrocuting one of them and having the other, um, dance off screen? Okay. And constructing a homing device out of this piece of junk. His homing signal is picked up by Stellar Santiago. And no, he didn't blink and miss something. She's never been introduced or even mentioned in any of the previous games, but she and Roger are actually good friends. This just happened in between games, I guess. Back on the deep ship, they run a DNA scan of the hair of one of the kidnappers. Ew. To find out that his name is Nigel Rancid. Cool. Stellar suggests that we look him up in cyberspace, which was something that everyone thought was a super cool word to say in the mid-90s. Remember, this was around the birth of the internet and no one really knew what the fuck it would turn into, so everyone thought it would end up looking like Johnny Mnemonic. And the game kind of takes the piss out of that, you'll see. Anyway, duty calls! We're sent to a retirement home to clean up this old lady's room, but surprise! It's another attempt to kidnap you, or kill you, or drug you. It's not entirely clear, because Stellar shows up again and shoves you out of the room. The door closes, there's an explosion for some reason, and we cut to her funeral. This is pretty heavy shit for a Space Quest game, honestly. Of my friend, I can only say this. Of all the souls I have encountered in my cleaning, hers were the most... Scuff resistant. But of course she's not really dead. She manages to send a short message to Roger saying it's all a big con, and Roger, dumb fuck that he is, tries to persuade his captain that they've made a big mistake and Stellar's still alive, but he's brushed off because of course his captain is in on it. There was a cutscene earlier that showed that. So Roger steals a shuttle, and dumb fuck that he is, plows it straight into some celestial anomaly that disables his ship. He repairs it, gets a jump start from a bad pun who sounds like she wants to jump more than just his engines. I'd jump you in a heartbeat, dollface. And then zooms off back to the retirement home to find out just what the fuck is going on. He's told to piss off. Just get out of my face. So he does, back to the shithole, where he buys a cyberspace jack off of Fester Platts? 
Okay, sure. Uh, I forgot to mention, there's a lot of fan service in this game. Earlier you met Elmo Pug, the CEO of Scumsoft, who's now a drunk who sells cheat codes to arcade games for booze. And Roger's quarters aboard the deep ship are littered with shit from previous games. But anyway, now we can finally get into cyberspace and check up on this Nigel Rancid character. Here's what cyberspace looks like. Remember when people used to call the internet the information superhighway? No? Well, they did back in the mid-90s, and this is a joke on that. So Roger finds a bunch of files in cyberspace that connect Nigel Rancid to Sharpay, the old woman who tried to steam us in her room, and her doctor, Dr. Bellows, who is the one that told us to piss off earlier, and whose computer we're currently using. Why is he just letting us use his- Never mind. We print out all this shit, flash him the damning evidence, and he tells us that, okay, Stella isn't actually dead. She's actually just part of this gross anti-aging experiment that you were supposed to have been the subject for, but you kept escaping, so they thought, fuck it, we'll use this bitch who keeps rescuing you instead. The dog has injected these tiny little nanorobots called nanites into Stellar that are currently busy rearranging her brain to implant Sharpay's consciousness. He proposes we shrink down Roger to miniature size and inject him into Stellar's body so he can get to the brain and stop the nanites. It's important to note at this point we're about two thirds into the game and this is the first anyone has ever mentioned anything about getting shrunken down. So way to hype up the ending of the game, Gamebox. It's kind of like if the trailer to Raiders of the Lost Ark said, oh, by the way, there's a cool exploding head at the end. Okay, we shrink down, get injected, and land on Stellar's stomach. See, we can't go straight up to the brain right away. We have to clear away some of the nanites that are piddling around inside her intestines too, for some reason. We drown them in stomach acid. Glove, glove, motherfuckers. And of course, we broke our ship when we crash landed here, so we have to hitch a ride on this tapeworm. Cute little fella, isn't he? to the appendix so we can score some silver from this tooth filling. Yeah, our, our ship runs on silver, apparently. Just go with it. Finally, we can lift off and head to the brain. We take a sweet ride down this frankly disgusting elevator shaft into the brain itself, zap the giant Sharpay mech that's digging around in Stellar's gooey bits, and blast off through this pustule on her face. All in a day's work. Stellar is surprisingly spry and alert for a person who just had her head drilled to bits and seems to have pica because all we found in her guts were like fingernails, screws, and a tapeworm. She tells Roger there's something big on the horizon in his future and we never find out what that is because the game ends here. And not just the game, but the whole series. Now, as I said at the start of the video, the follow-up game Space Quest 7 was canceled when the company was going to pieces. And as for this game, well, it wasn't terribly well received, and behind the scenes it was such a fucking nightmare to make that Josh Mandel left the company halfway through its development. A very reluctant Scott Murphy took over the reins as project leader and ended up being the only one credited on the back of the box, which he was massively upset by and didn't know about until the box was already in stores, so thank you and fuck you. The game does have its moments, and most importantly it brought back Gary Owens as the narrator. Oh, give me a break. Let me put my boots on. It's getting deep in here. But like Space Quest V, it has a very different vibe than the first four games, owing to the fact that once again the magic combination of Scott Murphy and Mark Crow was missing. Anyway, a couple of fan games have since speculated on what might have happened after the events of Space Quest VI, most notably Space Quest Vohal Strikes Back. And to your right is your beloved Beatrice, also in grave danger, and did I mention skimpy outfit? and Space Quest Incinerations. Oh, 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 the dagger in the chest. And various other places. Both are free, full-length games that do a pretty damn good job of wrapping the story of Roger Wilco up to some extent, but as far as an official ending to the series, never got one. Space Quest the franchise is now in the hands of Activision, and while they did try to revive the Sierra brand for a brief blip and release the new episodic King's Quest game that everyone quickly forgot about, no plans to do anything constructive with the Space Quest brand has since materialized. And so we come to an end of the Space Quest primers, and indeed an end to, well, this channel, sort of, because I will be going on an extended hiatus now, chasing my own impossible dream of becoming a game developer. Uh, there's more info on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash spacequesthistorian, so I hope to see you there and on the SQH Discord, there's a link in the description to that, and as always, around the Chrono Stream. Bye!